Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at rondos and some of the rondos I'm going to use with my team during this coming season. Now, you know, in my opinion, you know, if you think of the possession game, the movement of the ball, quick passing, you can learn all of that from doing rondos. And it's something I, in particular, have never practiced enough and it's something I'm going to hit a lot this year. So I'm going to run through some of my favourites. The only thing it doesn't work on is shooting and goal scoring, but you can feature that into your training sessions as well. So let's start with the basic ones. So a 4v1, 3v1, you've probably all done this exercise. Essentially, we're just moving the ball around, trying to keep it away from this one player. If you are coaching juniors, you can still do this. It's excellent. But you're going to have to invest a lot of time and this will probably be you as the coach and you'll be just not trying too hard, but you'll be just saying, right, I'm coming in from the left. So you might close this space off, just encourage them to work on their first touch, not close their body off. So try and open receive. Well, I don't mean open receive, but open so your body isn't facing the direction where it came from. So you can shift the ball in all sorts of directions. And yeah, just forcing certain passes, getting them to think. But if you have got decent players, just again, emphasize what's important about our first touch, what are, what's important about our body position, and just look to move the ball. So these players obviously aren't stationary, they can move up and down their line. And if the defender touches it or it goes out of play, then that person will swap with the person who did the dodgy pass, basically. The three beat one, you know. The way it always works, you can't have five in each drill because you don't often have multiples of five. So you probably run these simultaneously. And a three beat one, I've got a little example here. So obviously if the ball's played there, this player will have to move. So you could introduce a rule. So if once you've played, you have to move or you could just let the players deal with the situation. I'd, I'd rather not set too many constraints and just let the players work out for themselves. If the ball went there, say it came there, then this player might want to move. You know, this person can obviously move along this line. But first touch, wonderful. You could go one touch, you could go mandatory two touch. I like two touch because it means the pass has to be firmer because it gives this extra opportunity for the defender to close in and be close. Um, so two touch makes sure that they have firmer passes. One touch, you can get away with a bit of a duff pass and... But yeah, so a mandatory two touch is my personal favourite. I've said set it up with a four metre square. You can go five metres, just have a look at your team. And if your team is losing loads of balls, then obviously you might have to just do some basic passing receiving drills. So here's the next level. So it's called a four beat four plus four. So the red team, uh, what I'm going to call the outside team, the blue team are the inside team, and the yellows are like a neutral team. So the red team are trying to keep the ball with the help of the neutral team. So this is where the plus four, so it's these reds and these yellows are basically on the same team, and they have to keep the ball away from the blues. So, you know, there's different sizes. This is a, like you could do a 10 by 15 if your players are really good. If you want to give them a bit more space, a bit more time, you could have 15 by 20 or even bigger. Just just think about it for your players. When I say meters, I just do steps. OK, I'm not I'm not measuring meters. I just go 15 steps and a step's probably more like a yard, really, isn't it? OK, so let's run through a few scenarios. So let's say they've passed in here, so they're keeping possession. Uh, it's come back inside and it's come to here. Transfer, we've, we've done our job, we've kept possession. Ah, then a dodgy pass happens. Okay, so rather than taking a nice easy option here, for example, obviously they're all going to move, but for the animation's sake, they've been very complex for me to make. But dodgy pass. So when the team trying to win the ball back has got it, they're then going to feed it out to one of the neutral players on this side or this side. And then the team, the reds and the blues will swap roles. So something like this. So now the neutral team and the blues are keeping the ball away from the reds. If the reds win it, they'll again swap with the blues. So on the next rotation, maybe the blues become the neutral players. Okay. But it's a really exciting rondo. And it's it's just different to the others. So it's it's another thing that you can keep practicing your rondos, keep the variation in your training sessions. 
what I would say is these aren't set. You know, this person can move all the way down this line. You know, you can work as a team. I wouldn't suggest they go opposite ways because it's not particularly helpful. So if these were two midfielders, you would expect them to work together, not in opposite ends. So you can also you know, bring that into your coaching points when you stop and chat about them. This is an eight versus three. So the eight, obviously this should be quite easy if you think about it, but if the space is constricted, it isn't. And you want to be fairly rigid with your position. So yes, they can move. They're not stuck to the spot. But they're not, um, you know, overlapping. They're not cutting in field. They're, you know, they're roughly in these spaces. So with all rondos, it's about keeping the ball. So it could be a timer. Can you keep it for a minute or two minutes? Can you get ten consecutive passes? You might have to start a bit lower if your team's um, not particularly strong at passing and receiving. You could because it can be quite demoralizing for the three so you could have some goals i've just put them off center here so if the three do win it they can go to try and score a goal so give them some incentive to get the ball rather than just here have the ball running around you for ages again i would make it two touches if the blue team do win it so let, let's say there's a dodgy pass here then this play could come in so to make it a three versus three or if this person's closer, they could come in, or even both, to make it an overload. So it's still hard work for the three, but they get they get a good exercise. And obviously, you're just going to rotate. Great for fitness as well, this one. So instead of a rectangular area, why not make it a hexagon? So this is a three versus three plus three. So it's basically a three versus three in the middle. Or you could look at this like a six feet six. So the blues have got to keep the ball, and the reds have got to keep the ball. But what I like about the hexagon shape is a hexagon is made up of six triangles. So it really encourages lots of triangular passes that we want to try and create in a game. Again, one touch, two touch, or a mandatory two touch, again, is my personal favorite. When I say seven to ten meters, I'm just stepping seven steps, okay, or ten steps. The smaller, the harder it will be for your players. Now, 11 versus five. You could do 11 versus 3 if you wanted to start this off. Um, and the reason you would do this is just to practice your formation setup. So here we're playing with a back 4, a mid 3, and a high 3. So you could just try and recreate some of the, the runs without the pressure of having 11 players. So doing this is to work on your team structure, your team outletting, your movements off the ball that you're expecting from players. And again, I've put some goals in because these five, when they get the ball, give them an option because otherwise it's just a lot of fitness, a lot of running, hopefully with not too much joy because you're really working the Reds hard. I've set this up with a 4 triple two. If you watch any of my previous videos, this is a formation that's becoming more popular. So, for example, what I was trying to explain earlier is if the ball is this player here what would you expect from these six advanced players to help you outlet the ball so you might go for a square option this person might run to a high position you might have someone coming into the middle one of the forwards may drop and there we go we've outlet the ball then we're getting used to are we promoting our wing backs you know all of these things you can talk about in this rondo but you have the option to practice it here this this isn't um a huge pitch remember it's uh let's go back how big did i say it was so like a 15 steps by 20 or 30 by 40 but you want the objective is can you get your players to move can you get your players to do what you want them to do with the ball and give them the confidence to try it let's skip through that one um this is the four triple two again if you remember that video we actually want to play through these link players so we want it to come into the link or a screen and then out and that's where our wit's going to come from so if you really want them to practice that movement if you play with a back three like a three two three two you could do the same thing but it's important to stay fairly rigid so the formation is there um keep them the ball you know there's no goals for you to score so if if you work the ball back to here set up in that original setup and then go again yeah, okay, just playing around there. So again, you know, there's a 3-2-3-2 three, two, three, two setup. So just, it's a fantastic rondo. Give them a go. That's all of them.
So take the ones you like. I'm going to do them all for sure. And let me know how you get on with them. Good luck.